Normally, when we do these sorts of videos, we've a pretty good idea of what car's gonna be under the cover. We'll know what it looks like because we've been fed pictures or there'll be a concept car at a motor show. So we know what we're gonna be dealing with. But under this cover is an all new electric car from the biggest name in British motoring. And I've not seen it yet. You're gonna be seeing it for the first time at the same time I do. Let's see what we think. What do you think? I'm quite surprised to be honest. This has a much more chunky American feel than we're used to with Fords in Europe. So it looks nothing like a Fiesta or a Focus or a Cougar, does it? Also, these wheels are huge. These are 21s and this is the top spec model, but even the lowest model will get 19 inch wheels. Although I didn't see any pictures of the new Explorer, I did get this specification list, which lists some of the features on there. And it's got things headed Sync Move, My Private Locker, and a Mega Console, which all sort of sound like the stuff that a 10 year old would have on their Christmas list, but we'll have a look at those details later. So first, let's get the important stuff out of the way. If you are thinking the Explorer name is familiar, it's because it's been used before on a big gas guzzling American SUV, which was briefly sold in the UK a couple of decades ago. It wasn't a huge success here, but it did have its moment of fame in Jurassic Park. This new model makes the old SUV look like a real dinosaur. At 4.4 meters long, it's almost exactly the same length as the best-selling Nissan Qashqai. So let's have a look at the inside because this is where the 10 year old's Christmas list comes in. First thing you notice is this huge screen and you can see down here, there are permanent controls for the heating and things like the, the defroster, which you use every day, but it's got another trick up its sleeve. If you press this button down here, the screen moves upwards. Now this is what they call sync move, which I thought was something to do with relocating a basin. But no, this means that if you're in town, you can use the navigation and have it in your eye line. And if you're just cruising home and want it to look a bit smoother, you can have it like this. That's not all. If you put it up in this position, you will see there's this space under here where you can put valuables like your mobile phone or say you're going jogging, which I do a lot, and you want to put your keys somewhere safe, you can put it in there. Then you put it down like that lock it in place, lock the car, and nobody's gonna be able to get in there without a crowbar. Now the mega console I thought was something that you might be able to play Mario Kart on, but it's not, it's this locker here. So underneath this handy armrest is this enormous storage space. There's a separator to stop things rattling around, which pulls out and you can use it as an ice scraper, handy. Now you could fit three 1.5 litre soft drink bottles in here, or if you want to remove this and it stores under the screen so it's not rattling around too much, you can then put a laptop in there or your handbag, shut it up and then pop to the shops without worrying that it's on site. So in front of me here on the top of the dash is this sound bar, which is a big speaker like you'd have in your living room. Gives a bit of a softer feel to the, the face here there, but also you've got this light strip here, which can change color depending on your mood or if you select different drive modes, it changes color too. In front of me here, there's a smaller screen, which has all the essential information you need for driving every day without taking your eyes too far off the road. So there's your speed, there's the navigation, there's also the battery charge level. Now, some of this tech will come as a welcome surprise to buyers, because underneath the Ford design body are some mechanical bits borrowed from Volkswagen's electric cars. It's sort of like copying your homework from the clever kid in class sort of a fake Ford, or a fraud even. That means it shares the motor, or motors if you opt for the four wheel drive version, and battery packs with cars like the ID4 and Skoda Enyaq. But there is one thing which the class swap VW has never managed to get right, and that's the infotainment systems. So Ford has used its own. Phew. Behind this squircle steering wheel, which is half square and half circle, are some stalks here, which I recognize from the Volkswagen ID buzz. And we didn't like them in that. And I don't think we're gonna like them here either. So this one here does the gears and this one does everything else. So you've got this kind of Rubik's cube puzzle to solve if you wanna turn on the rear wiper. There are a few other Volkswagen influences and the one that worries me most is these window switches here. Now there are only two buttons to do four windows and it means you have to press buttons and take your eye off the road to get it to work properly. It really annoys me in the ball and I think it's gonna annoy me here too. 
I really like the seats. Now this is the top level version, so they are just 12 ways electrically and they're covered in something which looks like leather but is actually called Sensico, which is an artificial leather. There's also much more of a quality feel in here. Everywhere I prod there are some really nice soft touch materials, but let's see how it is in the back. Now some of the plastics aren't quite as nice as they are in the front of the car, but it doesn't feel quite the contrast that you get in like a Volkswagen ID3. There's loads of knee room here, although the floor does feel quite high up, presumably because there's batteries under that space. Now, there's a lot of headroom too. Now, I'm not particularly tall at five foot eight, but you can see there's a, there's a big gap between me and that glass there. But if I was right on the edge because there's three people in the back here, I think I might bang my head on this roof lining there. Confusingly, Ford hasn't confirmed the battery capacities yet, and they might not be quite the same as the VW and Skoda equivalents. However, Ford has given the range figures and does seem to have teased a bit more power from some of the motors too. The entry level Explorer will use a 170 horsepower motor driving the rear wheels with an official range of up to 218 miles. It will charge it up to 130 kilowatts at a suitable rapid DC point. A 286 horsepower rear wheel drive variant with a bigger battery will take a charge of up to 170 kilowatts and have an official range of 335 miles. If I was to guess, I'd say it has a capacity of about 82 kilowatt hours. Big Daddy is this version, which has two motors and 340 horsepower. It's also got the bigger battery, so the range will be over 300 miles, it's estimated. Now that 304 horsepower, which is plenty for a family car, is almost identical to a Tesla Model Y, which I'm sure is no coincidence. Using a rapid charger, both batteries will charge from 10 to 80% in around 25 minutes, using this flap on the rear wing here. You also get to look at the nice uh, sticker on the side here. You can tow with them too, with limits of between 1,000 and 1,200 kilograms. Oh, and all Explorers have a heat pump, which extracts warmth from the surrounding air to heat the interior. It's a bit like putting the aircon in reverse and is far more efficient than using heating elements powered from the battery. So the boot capacity is 450 litres, which is quite a lot less than an ID4 or a Skoda Enyaq, but it's a lot bigger than an ID3 or a Nissan Leaf, for example. With the seats down, it's 1400 litres. Those figures are about the same as a Toyota BZ4X or a Nissan Aria. Now, initially, I thought Ford had done what Tesla have done and just got rid of the rear parcel shelf, but it's cleverer than that. They've made it fixed to the rear tailgate, so it goes up here when you open the, the boot. And that means you can get rid of the side supports here and you have a bit more space to put stuff in. Just remember it's there if you've got a dog in the back. If you like the look of the Explorer, you're going to have to wait until the autumn before there's one covered in balloons and bunting in your local Ford dealer. We don't know a price yet either, but I'd guess it's going to be somewhere between the Volkswagen IDs, starting at between 35 and 40,000 pounds. That will leave some space in the range for the smaller electric Puma, which we'll see in 2024 sometime. It's going to be a couple of months before we get a go behind the wheel, but I'm pretty sure Ford will want to put its own stamp on those borrowed mechanical bits. So what do you think? Do you like it? Let us know in the comments and while you're there, click the like and subscribe button because that way you'll be notified when we do get a go in it.